Today we will take a look on the Ortho Laser Master 2 Pro S2 laser engraver slash cutter machine, inclusive some of its optional accessories. I got this machine from Made the Best to review it. This not means that I won't be honest about it. We will do an unboxing, an assembly, firmware upgrade, software setup with Lightburn and also a bunch of tests on different materials to get the feeling what can we do with it. So let's get started. This video was sponsored by PCBWay, where you can order your custom PCBs and they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal, 3D printing and injection molding services. Let's start with the unboxing. This is the LaserMaster 2 Pro S2. Which packed really well and comes with printed manuals. And you can find online the digital form. I got the 5W long focus laser module which is better for cutting, but the same machine can be ordered with the 5W short focus laser module which is better for engraving and there is also a 10W version which has double the power and has a more concentrated focal spot. The aluminum extrusions are straight and clean and the assembly with these partially pre-assembled parts are pretty easy. You just need to take care that the numbers on the frame aluminum extrusions are lining up properly. Then you can slide the X gantry onto the frame. Install and tension the timing belts on both sides, which are fixed with the feet part. Check if the laser holder and the X gantry can move freely. Then fix the wiring and finally we can install the laser module. And we have just arrived to our first recommended accessory, which is the Z-height adjuster. If you look at closer, the base Z-height adjusting mechanism is pretty sloppy. It has a huge tolerance, just grabs the laser module unit on a really small surface, which already left marks on the slider. To install this accessory, we need to take off first these two adapter plates. Then we can fix it with four screws and install another adapter plate onto the laser module, which can be screwed directly onto the anti-backlash nut. And from now on, we can set up the set height precisely and quickly with a more ergonomic way. In case the lead screw are too loose or tight, you can adjust it here. So you can still turn it, but it won't move by itself. Because of the thickness of this Z-height adjuster, the laser module sits 2 cm closer to the frame and so it cannot reach the limit switch, so we need to put this adapter plate to fix that. Additionally, there are some software side adjustments also required, which I will show you later. The long focus laser module comes with an air assist nozzle, so let's install it. We need to take off first the original cover, Then install this fitting onto the nozzle and then fix them onto the laser head. We can connect now the flexible air hose and adjust it. And finally tighten this screw to fix its position. Now we just need to route the tube along with the power cable so it won't fall onto the working area. I tried to stiffen it up a little bit with a cable sleeve, but it did not work as I expected. So I took additionally a Teflon tube, which I use by my 3D printers, and it worked out pretty well. So now I do not have to fear that the cables will be burned or jammed somewhere during operation. And at the same time, it is much less added weight as I would install the same cable chain solution like on the left hand side. And we have arrived to our second recommended accessory. After we install the air assist nozzle, we need an external air source. This little adjustable speed air pump comes with its own air hose nozzle and with some adapter fittings in case you have a different hose diameter which we have. But we can solve it simply cutting off a small part of the tube and plug them together like this.
Attention, this thing is pretty loud, so calculate with it. And the third really handy accessory is the honeycomb bed, which helps us to not cut into our table and also keeps the bottom side of our workpiece cleaner if we cut them through. And that's how our machine looks after fully assembled. I like it. But before we are getting our hands dirty, let's speak about laser glasses. The most important thing is your eyesight. You can see here what is the difference between a certified OD6 Plus laser glasses and the one which was delivered with the set. Even the color is wrong. The blue laser should be filtered with an orange color, that is why the plexi is also orange on the laser module and on the enclosures. Do me a favor and buy yourself a decent laser glasses before starting to work with diode lasers. If you don't know where to start, I put the link of mine into the description. So now that we have our glasses on, we can power it up. Plug first the DC power, then the USB and make sure that the emergency switch is not engaged. After we hold 5 seconds the power button, it turns on and will go automatically to home position. So be sure that there is nothing in the way. We can make immediately a firmware update. For this you need to hold the power button 5 seconds long and then press the reset button once. After that, on the PC we pop up the laser machine as an external drive, where we need to copy the firmware bin file. And it is as easy like that. Now when we turn it back on and launch the Lightburn software, we can see if the firmware update was successful. One step left is to reset the default values. Take care, if you have made any changes on your laser machine before the firmware upgrade, make a backup of your parameters to be able to restore them later. And now we need to adjust some parameters because of the Z-height adjuster accessory we installed before. By typing a double dollar sign we can read all of the parameters which are the default ones now because of the firmware update. We need to change these two values which can be also made by the machine settings where it is better described. So the y-axis maximum travel distance needs to be changed to 380 mm and the x acceleration is also needs to be lowered because of the higher moving mass we have. After the parameter changes we need to click onto the write button to write them to the controller. The same result can be reached by typing the parameters into the console. And the last adjustment is by device settings, we also need to change the height value, so the bed surface in the software will show the real work area size. This machine comes with four safety features, from which the first is the flame detection. As default it is switched off, but we can turn it on by changing the 261 parameter, which value means the sensitivity of it. By pressing the power button we can continue the engraving. Take care, if you set up too sensible, then the UV light from the sun can also trigger it. The second safety feature is the emergency stop button, which comes really handy if something goes wrong. The third safety feature is the built-in tilting sensor, which stops the machine if it's getting tilted. We can also set up its sensitivity. As default it is just stopped when I dropped it to the table. After setting it more sensible, worked great from the front tilting, but somehow it not stopped after I tilted from the side. Maybe it has something to do with the actual head movement. Don't know, do you have the same behavior? The fourth safety feature is the collision detection, which were good right out of the box with both axes, as you can see. Let's put on the laser glasses and start with the test file. Here we can see how the different wood layers have changed the engraving color tones. If we want to engrave pictures, we need a better quality raw material, which has a more homogeneous top layer. 
I made also a business card design which I engraved first on plywood. And then also tried it on the aluminium card. Cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol to get more contrast and a shinier surface. And after that I tested the blue color also. Here you can see what a huge difference the air assist makes. I have just turned on after the first centimeter and the cut just got so much cleaner. The difference is clear. Finally, let's see what this machine really capable of. I was amazed by lifting up the plate at the end. Look how cool this model is! The rigid plywood turned to a really flexible one. The fitting tolerance was a little tight, but with some force I was able to assemble the parts together. You can find the model in the video description. However, it is not on the compatible material list, but with several iterations I have found a way to engrave onto glass surfaces also. But this is a topic of another video. This little journey turned out pretty well, I think. I feel that my skill set is expanded. The machine itself delivers what it promises, and even more with its optional accessories. As a summary, let's see what are the pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. Quick assembly. You need around 30 minutes from unboxing to shoot the first laser beam. Easy to learn. It has not such a steep learning curve as by 3D printing. There are only two variables, the laser power and the movement speed. From these two you can leave the laser power in 100% most of the time and just play with the speed. In this way you can reach the best productivity. Safety features, what you have just seen. Know-how. Ortur was one of the first on the market in this field. They have a lot of know-how and they are also listening to their customers and developing their products continuously. Price-quality ratio is very good. If you start to sell your razor engraving products, the machine can pay itself back pretty quickly. And now the cons. It works out of the box, but you can reach even better results with its optional accessories, which costs extra. The cable management on the X gantry. It needs some creativity to make it usable. The laser module cooler fan is pretty loud. I don't understand why don't they invest a few bucks more for a more silent fan which would deliver much better user experience. The enclosed laser glasses quality is just terrible. All in all, I enjoyed my time with this machine. It made me so much fun and I'm happy that it is the member of my manufacturing machine family. If you want me to test the next generation or to Laser Master 3 also, and you have some ideas what I should test on it, leave a comment and hopefully we will get one to play around with. I hope this video was useful and you learned something from it. If that is the case, then give it a thumbs up. We are finished for now. See you next time. Oops. <laughs> <laughs>